A Critique of Interventionism by Ludwig von Mises. Chapter 3. Social Liberalism. Part 9. The Failure of the Prevailing Ideology. In all variations and colors of the ideas of socialism and syndicalism have lost their scientific moorings. Their champions have been unable to set forth another system more compatible with their teachings and thereby refute the charges of emptiness by the theoretical economists. Therefore, they had to deny fundamentally the possibility of theoretical knowledge in the field of social science, and especially in economics. In their denial, they were content with a few critical objections to the foundation of theoretical economics, but their methodological critique, as well as their objections to various theories, have proven to be utterly untenable. Nothing, absolutely nothing, has remained of what half a century ago Schmoller, Brentano, and his friends used to proclaim as the new science. The fact that studies in economic history can be very instructive and that they should be undertaken had been known before and had never been denied. Even during the zenith of the historical school of theoretical economics did not remain idle. The birthday of modern subjectivist theory coincided with the foundation of the Association for Social Policy. Since then, economics and social policy have confronted each other. The social scientists do not even know the foundation of the theoretical system and have taken no notice of the significant development of theoretical knowledge in recent decades. Wherever they sought to deal with it critically, they could not get beyond the old errors already fully dealt with by Menger and Bombowitz. But all this has not weakened the socialistic and syndicalistic ideology. Today it is swaying the minds of people more than ever before. The great political and economic events in recent years are seen almost exclusively from its viewpoint. Though, of course, it has failed here also. What Casa said about the ideology of proletarian socialism applies also to that of socialism of the chair. All experiences of the last decade passed by the ideology without influencing it. Never did it have more opportunities for expansion, and scarcely ever has it been as sterile as during the debates on socialization. The ideology is sterile, and yet it is reigning. Even in Great Britain and the United States, classical liberalism is losing ground every day. To be sure, there are characteristic differences between the teachings of German Edenism and Marxism on the one hand, and the new doctrine of salvation in the United States on the other. The phraseology of the Americans is more carefully worded than that of Schmoller, Held, or Brentano, but the Americans' aspiration basically concur with the doctrines of the socialists of the chair. They also share the mistaken belief that they are upholding the private property order. When, by and large, socialism and syndicalism are in a stagnant state, when we notice some retreating steps on the road to socialism are taken, when thought is given to a limitation of labor union power, the credit can be given neither to scientific perception of economics nor the prevailing sociology. But for a few dozen individuals all over the globe are cognizant of economics and no statesman or politician cares about it. The social ideology, even of those political parties that call themselves middle class, is totally socialistic, egotistic, syndicalistic. If nevertheless socialism and syndicalism are languishing, although the prevailing ideology is demanding further progress, it is solely due to the all too visible decline in labor productivity as a result of every restrictive measure. Swayed by the socialistic ideologies, everyone is searching for excuses for the failure and not for the cause. Nevertheless, the net result has been greater caution in economic policy. Politics does not dare introduce what the prevailing ideology is demanding. Taught by bitter experience, it subconsciously has lost confidence in the prevailing ideology. In this situation, no one, however, is giving thought to replacing the obviously useless ideology with a useful one. No help is expected from reason. Some are taking refuge in mysticism, Others are setting their hopes on the coming of a strong man, the tyrant who will think of them and care for them.